My name's Simon, and in this video, I'm going to be making a pouch for my good old one litre, 32 ounce Nalgene bottle. Before we get started, um, I just wanted to say a couple of things. Um, some of you will know uh, that I've just come, come out of hospital. Um, I went in there for, a, for an operation on my heart. Um, I'd been suffering from a, a condition called atrial fibrillation and, uh, and I went in and they sorted out. Um, and uh, it was a complete success. Um, you know, they, 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 they sorted it, they've stopped it um, and the work that they've done should ensure that it doesn't, it doesn't happen again. Um, and in time I'll be able to come off all my medication and, um, and it's just brilliant. Um, the NHS in the UK is fantastic. We are so lucky to have this service. Um, people knock the NHS all the time. You know, people whinge about waiting times and, and this, that and the other. Do you know what? We have nothing to whinge about. We are so, so fortunate to have this service. It doesn't cost us anything. Yes, we, we pay our taxes, but everybody else pays their taxes around the world as well. If we have problems, you know, we can, we can go and we can get ourselves sorted out without having to worry about how we're going to pay for it. It's fantastic. It's brilliant. So, um, well done NH NHS, and thank you all the staff at Bart's. Good job, brilliant stuff. The other thing I want to say is, um, just to you guys out there, uh, you know, I had so many messages, um, so many good luck messages, so many people who, who'd obviously been thinking about me um, and, uh, and, and wishing me well, and wishing me luck for the operation. Um, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. Um, so just thank you. Thank you for all your support. It, it, it meant a lot to me. Okay, on with the project. I've got one of these stainless steel Nalgene bottles. Um, and uh, one of the advantages of using these stainless steel bottles is that you can boil water in the bottle directly over the fire, which is brilliant. You can, you can take the plastic lid off, you can use one of those, um, those uh, fish mouth opener devices or a stick and you can just stick this straight in the fire and boil water, which is great. But at some point, uh, you're going to need to put that back in your pack, and it's going to be covered in soot, and um, I don't really like having to clean off soot off the rest of all my kit at the end of every trip. So what I like to do, if I possibly can, is to keep all my messy, sooty fire gear uh, in pouches. Um, so what I'm going to do is today is I'm going to make a pouch uh, for this Nalgene bottle, uh, using waxed cotton canvas. Um, I bought a load of this uh, off eBay um, and I bought two different colours because I really like uh, a kind of like a two-tone um, uh, yeah I really like two-tone pouches. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I've, I've already got a load of pouches that I made um, so I'm going to show you some of those just um, just so you can see where I'm kind of going with this. Um, this one here is probably the closest to it. This is the one. This is one that I made for my zebra billy, um, and I kind of borrowed the idea a little bit off um, off the pouches that you can buy from fi from uh, Firebox. Uh, they do pouches for the zebra billy with these little tote pouches which sit inside, and I really like that idea. So that little pouch there just holds a Trangia burner, um, some matches, some fire lighter, some methylated spirits, bits and bobs like that, which I just want to keep together. So that just sits in the top and then the um, Zebra Billy just sits inside there, okay? And it just keeps it all together. Um, I, I went for this kind of like two-tone effect, um, but that also serves a purpose because that's a double layer. Uh, so the bottom of the pouch where it's going to take the most wear, there's two layers around the bottom and there's two layers on the bottom as well, okay? So that's, it's just, just to make sure it lasts well, really. Um, so that's, that's probably the closest to what we're going to be making today. Um, I also made one for my um, titanium plate come frying pan because that's another thing that just gets covered in soot in the fire. Um, so yeah, that has that has its own little pouch which it goes in. Same sort of idea, a little flap that goes over, cinches up with a draw cord, and shove it in my pack, and all the mess from the uh, from the pan is kept inside that little pouch. All right, um, and I made one for my firebox stove. So whenever I'm making something, um, I, like to, I like to start with a template. Um, it serves two purposes. It, uh, it, it becomes a kind of model in its own right, so I can check whether the sizes are correct by, by wrapping the template around 
the object that I want to actually make the pouch for or whatever. Um, and obviously it gives me something that I can mark around, okay? Um, so I've made um, a set of templates here for the, for the components I need. The bottle's gonna need a base, okay? So this bit here is, is, is the base part. Uh, that's obviously bigger than the, than the, um, the water bottle, uh, but that's because they, uh, it allows for the seam. You're gonna need three circles like this, okay? The bottom is going to be reinforced, so there'll be two layers thick on the base. And on the very top of the uh, pouch, there'll be, um, there'll be like a little flap, which goes on first before you cinch up the draw cord and it just keeps it all contained in there, all right? So you're gonna need three like that. Um, because I'm doing mine in two-tone, I'm gonna have two out of one color, which will become the base, and um, the third one will be in the contrasting color, which will become the bit on the top. That'll become more apparent a bit later on. Uh, the larger rectangle here is the size that I want the sides to be. So, uh, you know, as I said before, you can wrap that around and double check that it's size-wise correct. Okay, uh, and that allows for uh, a seam around the bottom where it's sewn onto the base and it allows for a seam at the top which will become where the draw cord goes. All right, so um, what I did in this case is I measured the height of the Nalgene bottle. Um, and uh, so that's about uh, 200 millimeters, eight inches. Um, and then I added on uh, a centimeter from the, for the bottom and uh, two centimeters for the top because that's got to be folded over twice for the draw cord, if you see what I mean, yeah? So uh, that, that gave me the size for that, for that large piece. And the other piece here is the, um, the reinforced bit like we have around here, okay? So that piece of fabric will actually be sewn onto this piece of fabric to form the reinforced sort of upstand, if you like, going around the bottom of the pouch. Okay, so back to this fabric. Um, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a thin cotton canvas, um, but it's impregnated with wax. It's a, the same stuff that you have on a, like a wax jacket, like a barber jacket, you know, um, which makes it um, uh, water resistant. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not so bothered about my water bottle getting wet, um, but it's more if that water bottle is wet. I can put it away in the pouch and it'll keep the moisture contained within the pouch and not damp, not make uh, other things in my pack damp. That's the idea. Um, and plus I really like the look of it. You know, as it, as it wears, it sort of, um, it, it, it develops a nice, a nice feel and a nice look to it, um, which, I, which I'm really keen on, I really like. As for equipment, um, you're gonna need something to cut uh, your materials out with. Um, you can use scissors, I'm gonna use scissors, I, I prefer to use scissors than anything else. Um, but you can also use one of those, um, those rotary cutters if you've, got a, um, if you've got a surface that you can cut on, um, you know, they make short work of, um, of cutting fabric. Um, I just prefer to use scissors, so that's what I'm going to use. Um, you need something to mark on the fabric itself. I'm going to use Taylor's chalk, um, just because it marks well and, uh, and it brushes off afterwards, so you, you don't end up with a, with a, a mark like you would if you used pen. Uh, you need a straight edge, I'm going to use a ruler, and I've got a, a longer piece of um, aluminium which I use as a straight edge. Uh, you'll, need, um, you'll need a set of compasses, drawing compasses. Um, I, you, well, you don't need to, I suppose you could, you could draw around something that was the right size if, if, if you could find something, you know. Um, but uh, it's, it's a lot easier with a set of compasses, um, you know, you can be a bit more accurate. Uh, you're going to need a lighter for melting the ends of your paracord. Uh, at the end, but you're also going to need a means of sewing. Now you could do all this by hand, that would be, that'd be perfectly fine, um, you know, some people are a lot better, th better at sewing by hand than I am. Uh, I prefer to use a machine because it's a bit uh, neater, um, and that's, so that's what I'm going to use. I've got an old, uh, an old Jones sewing machine, so that's what I shall use. Um, but like I say, you don't have to. If you haven't got a sewing machine, you can do this by hand, no problem. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so hopefully now you have um, a large rectangle, a thinner, smaller rectangle, and three circles. Um, the smaller rectangle 
you're going to now sew onto the larger rectangle. And this is going to form the, the reinforced uh, strip along the bottom of your pouch, okay? Um, and it's going to give it that nice two tone contrast. Okay, and once you've done that, you're then going to fold that bit of canvas over. Line the edges up, the bottom edges. Just press it down, give it a good crease. And then you're going to sew along, securing it on. That way you only see one line of stitching and it just looks a bit, a bit neater in my mind. two circles that came out of what the one color uh, you're going to sew those together the other circle um, we need to reinforce the edge of this um, what I like to do is to to stitch a zigzag stitch all the way around the edge now if I had a um, like an overlocker uh, hem locker kind of uh, sewing machine then obviously I'd use that but I haven't um, but I do have that zigzag or cross stitch I think it might be called um, function on my machine so I'm just going to use that and it basically just stops the edges from fraying it's only cotton um, and uh, if I did nothing that would just over time that would all just come apart and fray and, and I'd end up with strands all, all over everything and it would be really annoying so that's the next step Okay, so now you should have your um, your two rectangles stitched together. Um, try and get that in focus. Okay, with one nice line of stitching, you should have your two circles in the same colour as the small rectangle uh, stitched together. As your reinforced base, and you should have the other circle which will become the little flap at the top um, just uh, just stitched around the edge with a cross stitch right just one last little job to do before we sew all this together um, I need to create uh, a little channel around the top of the bag uh, through which a draw cord can pass so you can put it together cinch it up around the top uh, I'm going to use some uh, paracord for that so it needs to be a channel big enough for the paracord to go through if I just folded that over and stitched along here, I'm still going to have that edge that can fray. So what I like to do is I like to make a small hem first, stitch that all the way along, and then once that's done, you can then fold that whole lot over and re-stitch it, and then everything's tucked in, and there's nothing that can fray there. Okay, it just it just makes for a much neater finish. Right, so we're on to sewing the base on. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole making of the bag. Um, it's the bit that I've had the most problems with in the past. Um, and what I've discovered um, is that it's a lot easier to have the circle on the top while you're stitching it. Um, so you can see uh, how, you can see whether the edges are aligning properly as you, as you sew around. So don't forget you wanna have you, you want to do all your stitching um, with the components inside out, okay? So the base is going to be underneath like that. So I need to have the face, which will be the outside part of the base, facing the face or the outside the outside part of the of the wall of the bag, if that makes sense, okay? The key here is to do short bursts. Um, I do sort of I don't know three, four, five stitches maybe at a time, and then I manipulate it and move them all together line up the edges again do a few more and just keep working my way around that way because obviously you're trying to you're trying to marry up a straight edge to a curved edge all right so it's a bit it's a little bit tricky but...
Right, hopefully you've got this far. Um, you've got the base sewn on, it's all inside out at the moment. Uh, the last thing you need to do is to uh, stitch along that last edge. Okay, um, doesn't really matter which end you start with, whether you start at the top where the drawstring is going to go or at the bottom. Um, just uh, you know, go nice and steady as you did before. Try and give yourself uh, as small a hem as you can get away with. Um, and then we'll reinforce that with a, um, with a cross stitch, a zigzag stitch like we did earlier on. Okay, last thing to do just before you turn it inside out is the little flap which is going to cover over the top of your water bottle. Uh, time to sew that on while it's inside out. Trim off all your scrags and your little tag ends. I'll turn it the right way around so you can see what it looks like. Right, to thread the paracord through, I just use a bit of wire. I bend the ends over so it doesn't catch anything. And literally just at the bottom there, I put it over the paracord and just squash it together and that's usually enough to hold it. And then literally just thread it through, thread the wire through. It's a lot easier to thread the wire through than it is to thread the paracord, which is obviously bendy. Sometimes it'll catch like it's doing now on the hem on the inside. You know where we did that little triangle? Oh, there we go, we're through now. There we go, there's the other end. I'll trim him off here. Don't forget to burn the end of your paracord, otherwise it'll fray. Okay, last thing is to stick on a plastic cord lock thing. I think that's what these things are called, cord locks. Something like that anyway. So I stick him on. Secure the end of those with an overhand knot. Just tidy it up. Make sure your knot looks all nice. It's important detail. Pull it tight. And there we have our pouch. Well, that came out really well. I'm really pleased with that. That's going to work really well to stop other things in my pack getting sooty when I use my stainless steel bottle in the fire. There we go. All held together. Nice and neat and tidy. Now obviously I've made this for um, a Nalgene bottle because that's what I use. Um, but uh, you know it will work equally well for um, any of the other any of the other makers of the, these sorts of bottles, um, Clean Canteen or uh, GSI, I believe, have one as well. Um, just whatever you've got, really. Um, but uh, you know, in essence, all it is is a is a drawstring pouch. So um, you know, you could you could vary this and make a pouch for just about anything. You could have a food pouch. You could have your possibles pouch. You could have um, various pouches to hold. Uh, items of clothing you want to get to quickly, separate from other things, just so they're easy to find in your pack. Uh, yeah, you know, the list is the list is endless, isn't it, really? Um, but uh, yeah, they're pretty straightforward to make. They're good fun to make, and um, and you get that nice feeling when you've when you've finished 
um, you know that you've that you've made something yourself, which is always nice. I like it anyway. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.